Here we have day two of the fetal pig dissection, looking at the thoracic and abdominal cavities. We'll try to take this alphabetically so we don't skip anything. Now last time we talked about this, we did find the anus. I can't expose it because he's tied down, but you'll just have to believe me, it's down there. Here we have the body wall that's been cut through. So the body wall includes a few different layers here. Here's the parietal peritoneum. We also have a muscle layer on the outside that's the external oblique, among other things. Here we have the cecum. It is a dead end pouch, part of the large intestine. You cecum. Yeah, I know the same thing as last time. Here we have the colon. It's another part of the large intestine. So we have the colon, and we have the cecum, and then we have the rectum, all different parts of the large intestine. This uh, spaghetti looking stuff is the small intestine. This is not alphabetical anymore. With the mesenteries found here. Now if we work our way earlier in the digestive tract, that small intestine, the first part of that small intestine, is known as the duodenum, and that's it right here. I'm hooking a piece of it. There it is. That's the first part of the small intestine, known as the duodenum, and that receives secretions from a nearby gland called the pancreas. And there it is. Now between the stomach and the small intestine, we have a very, very tough uh, valve called the pyloric valve right there. And if you could feel it on the video, you would feel it would be very, very hard. And you'd be like, oh yeah, that's different. And then here we have the stomach, and on the inside of the stomach, this one doesn't show it quite as well, but we do have wrinkles called rugae on the inside of the stomach. And if we were to follow the stomach anteriorly, so if I put my blunt probe up there, theoretically this blunt probe is going to find the esophagus. And I should be able to show the esophagus using it, but there's some stuff in the way. <laughs> Continuing our little tour here, this large structure is the liver. And here we have here we have the gallbladder. Usually it's green, this time it's brown. Some of the other specimens it's green. As you kind of tour the room. Looking posteriorly, we have the kidney. Now the kidney is on the other side of a membrane called the parietal peritoneum. So you have to remove the parietal peritoneum to see the kidney. Is it the same membrane as the one on here? It is. Okay. It is. We have the large intestine, we've already indicated the liver, we've already shown the mesenteries, we've already shown the pancreas, we've already shown the parietal peritoneum, we just talked about. Pyloric valve, we've already shown. Again, there's the rectum right there. The rugae are the wrinkles inside the stomach. Here's the small intestine. Once again. And one organ we did leave out is the spleen. The spleen is not directly associated. Um, in terms of task with any of the digestive organs, it does do red blood cell uh, recycling. So there's the, uh, there's the spleen, here's the umbilical arteries, left and right, they're red, and then here's the umbilical vein, and this is the urinary bladder. Looking up into the thoracic cavity, we have the lungs, this is the lung here, and there's another lung, there's more lungs on the other side. There's a membrane over the top of the lungs called the visceral pleura. This structure in the middle is the heart, and there's a membrane over the top of the heart, and then we hook it, called the uh, pericardium. If we took out some of this lung tissue and really got aggressive, we'd be able, be able to find bronchi. We'll show those on the next video that we make. But the bronchi are the major branches that go from the trachea into the lung. Uh, if we work our way a little bit more anterior, just outside the thoracic cavity, we have the thyroid gland and the thymus gland. And if we look on the, uh, if we look beneath the thyroid gland, we can see this ridged structure that is the trachea. So we have the larynx, which is actually a part of the trachea, and then here we have the rest of the trachea, and it follows down back behind everything. Again, the dissection on uh, our next uh, dissection, fetal pig number three, will show that a lot more clearly. If we continue our tour of the respiratory system, so so far we've looked at we've looked at the lungs, and we've looked at the trachea, and we've looked at the larynx. If we follow this one step further, back into the back of the mouth of the pig here, this little flap is the epiglottis, and the hole that it's protecting is known as the glottis. And that finishes our little tour of the digestive system, the uh, thoracic cavity, and the respiratory system.